Bitcoin is skyrocketing, having potentially its best run of 2021, which is saying a lot considering price went all the way to $65,000 this year. We're about to have potentially our eighth green day in a row, something that has not happened in 2021. Is now the time to be euphoric? Well, I'm recommending cautious optimism. Once again, we saw people bearish at support when prices at 30, and now they're extremely bullish at very strong resistance around 40K. I'm going to take a look at the chart and tell you why cautious optimism and being careful is probably the best route for the moment. And we're also going to review all the news. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit that like button right down below. Now, as I mentioned, Bitcoin is on a pretty epic winning streak at the moment when it was at 30,000. People seem to be extremely bearish, saying that it had to go to much lower prices. I pointed out that there were a lot of signals that we were at strong support and price was likely to go up, which it did. Well, now we have the opposite situation. That does not mean the price has to go down, but it means that you are cautious at strong resistance. As I've said a million times, we need to get above roughly the 42K or 43K level before we are out of the woods. Right now, we are seeing people getting euphoric and talking about new all-time highs right when price is at resistance, just like we saw them talking about 15K targets right at support. I'm going to tell you what I'm looking at on the chart and you can decide for yourself. First, we have the monthly chart here. I've pointed this out quite a few times. As we get closer, we're really starting to cheer for a close above this dash line. That's the EQ of this ascending channel that price has been in since 2013. A flip of this EQ and a hold as support should target six-figure Bitcoin, the top of the channel. Looking at the weekly chart, we have the beautiful bounce off the 50 MA that I've showed a few times, and we're finding resistance right around the 38.2% retracement of this entire move up from 3,800 all the way to 65,000. As you know, we bounced above the golden pocket and are presently holding above the 50% retracement level. That 38.2%, which is a strong support and resistance historically, is also right around this key level from the swing high of the previous move, an all-time high around 42,000. This is going to be very, very strong resistance. We're going to want to see serious volume pushing through that. And that's when we start talking about making higher highs in a new bull market and being out of the woods. For now, price is still ranging, although optimistically, we are in the top part of the range. Looking at the daily chart, a lot of optimism here, a spike of volume on the last few candles, and finally breaking out of this descending blue channel and retesting it today as support. That is a good thing. Still, we want to get back above this 42,000 level before we can be really, really excited about heading up. But for now, the daily chart is looking really good. Also looking really good on the B bands out above the bands. Of course, once you get out over your skis like this, you expect some retracement to come back in the bands, somewhat like we saw in December, right? It got out for a few candles, consolidated, dropped, and continued up, consolidated, dropped, continued up. So we could see some consolidation in this area below resistance, which is sort of what we are seeing for the moment. As you can see here on the four hour chart, this blue supply zone, I've pointed it out now for a few months. Really, really strong resistance. One, two, three, four major times it was rejected. Five, six, potentially seven. We're trading below it right now at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is the time for me when I am recording this video. As you can see, and this exists on almost every time frame below the daily, like 12 hour and down, we have potential bearish divergence. We will know if it's confirmed probably before this video comes out, but potential bearish divergence here on multiple time frames. You're going to see it all over the place. We can probably go to the six hour. There it is. We can go to the 12 hour. There it is. That's a slightly lower high. But I'm not that concerned about this, and I will tell you why. Because with the velocity of this move up, almost any drop will give us more hidden bullish divergence, right? Here we saw continuation around 36,600 with hidden bullish divergence. Well, if price drops down even a bit more, we're going to end up having more hidden bullish divergence on all these time frames, which would be a signal that the bear div is canceled and that price is likely to go up. Also, the other point to understand about RSI, this is the highest four-hour RSI has gotten this entire year. 
a bear div is somewhat inevitable. The odds of pushing that high on RSI once again on the next push are very, very low. So I would look for some consolidation personally around this resistance, maybe a drop down a bit lower to gain some fuel, hidden bullish divergence and push up. I can just say that technically looking at the chart right now, if these bear divs confirmed, it would be very unlikely that we continue to push much, much higher before having a bit of a healthy correction. Again, that does not mean I think we're going back down to 30,000 or 20,000 or 15,000. It just means that we are likely to gather steam in this area. And maybe you don't want to be euphoric pressing right into resistance. Generally, things look good on higher time frames. It's just time to be cautiously optimistic and wait for confirmation with breaks of those higher levels and flipping them to support. Now, Altcoins, I've been saying for quite a long time, there aren't that many great scenarios for altcoins on their Bitcoin pairs. Yes, altcoins will rise against USDT when Bitcoin rises, of course. But if they're rising less, what's the point? You might as well just be in Bitcoin. You're making more money and you're not losing your Bitcoin. The entire idea is to stack sats and you are not stacking sats when Bitcoin is wrecking your altcoin pairs. As you can see here, Listen, it's a bit of nonsense to do technical analysis on a Bitcoin dominance chart. The reason being that this is not a traded asset. So when you have support and resistance on a normal chart, they're caused by people putting their orders there. That's where they're buying and selling. That doesn't exist on an asset that's not traded. But still, it's fun to look at the chart and get some ideas. Either way, you can see that Bitcoin dominance is pushing hard and it's pushing through these highs of this entire correction here. After that massive alt season, we should expect, in theory, to have Bitcoin dominance push a little higher. That would happen if Bitcoin rages up, and it might happen if Bitcoin rages down. So the only scenario that might be good for all coins in the short term is if Bitcoin consolidates and moves a bit sideways. For now, I'm generally staying away. On Ethereum, we had a long trade from here at 0.005 at support. There was bullish divergence on the four-hour chart. This is the daily and the target was this EQ. That's where we were done. When this was rejected here, I pointed out that meant we were likely to see a trip down to the lows of the range. As you can see on the daily, RSI was extremely overbought. It has never reached oversold. So maybe we look for ETH on the Bitcoin pair to hit oversold, come down to the range lows, and that would be a time to head back up. On ETH USD, it doesn't look so bad, right? Because it's following Bitcoin. It's holding support here at the EQ of the channel, not bad. But once again, that was also overbought. Eventually, it will make the trip to oversold. If Bitcoin goes up strong, we will see this probably continue, but less than Bitcoin because the ETH BTC pair is likely to drop. Now, let's dig into all the news that is driving markets today. First, Bitcoin in longest winning streak in 2021 as crypto rebounds. This is what I was talking about before. Largest cryptocurrency is gyrating. Gyrated. Around the 40,000 level, digital coins rose on Wednesday despite global market caution. Bitcoin is an uncorrelated asset. It is not correlated to other markets. It's stupid to continue talking about it. But yes, Chinese stocks are selling off like mad. Markets are shaky a bit. And Bitcoin is going up. No surprises here. Here's what they had to say. The virtual coin rose as much as 7.5% to top 40,900 on Wednesday during New York trading hours. And like I said, this would be the eighth blue day, which would be a record for 2021. But usually when you start re setting records, that's when you revert to the mean and have a bit of consolidation and potentially downside. But interesting to see that even Bloomberg is talking about this huge Bitcoin winning streak. Ether trading volume surged 1,400% in first half as institutions took exposure. Coinbase, Ether outperformed Bitcoin in terms of volume growth and price performance. Now, I spoke recently with Alex Mashinsky. He said the same thing he's seeing on Celsius, that there's already been a flippening that Ether volume and interest is much, much higher than Bitcoin. And Coinbase now saying the same thing should be an eye opener. I've been saying this for over a year. I think that there's a lot more upside in Ethereum than there is in Bitcoin, that naturally institutions will gravitate towards Ethereum when they're done looking at Bitcoin, and that Ethereum is a platform that everything in crypto seems to be being built on. I just think that it has a lot more upside. Bitcoin is the most important asset in the world. It's digital gold. It's a store of value. But if you're looking for something with more upside to make more money, that would be like investing in the internet in the 90s. Ethereum may be what you should look at. Here's some of the statistics. Ether's trading volume totaled $1.4 trillion in the January to June period, a 1,461% rise from $92 billion observed in the first half of 2020. The fact that this is outperforming Bitcoin should be definitely get your attention. Binance shrinks non-KYC withdrawal limits as crypto exchanges face regulatory pressure. Now, we all know that you could have an account that was not KYC'd on Binance and you could still withdraw up to two Bitcoin per day. That's pretty 
pretty crazy that you could basically take out almost $80,000 a day without them knowing who you are. Well, now they've reduced that to 0.06 Bitcoin per day. I think we saw this coming for a long time. The question is, why are we seeing all these major exchange moves right now? It seems like maybe something is coming in terms of regulation that we don't know about yet. We just saw both Binance and FTX reduce their leverage to 20x max down from 100 and 125x. Now we're seeing a move like this. It is a bit of a head scratcher and I think that they know something potentially that we don't and that we should be watching very soon for a major announcement about regulation. Now on to the story of the day, in my opinion, Senator Elizabeth Warren pushes for tighter crypto rules in new letter to Yellen. Oh my gosh, Senator Warren, show me where Bitcoin touched you. Why are you such a hater? This woman is absolutely terrified. It's very clear when you read her words, how absurd her opinions are. We got Elizabeth going to Warren and we got Janet yelling about how bad crypto and Bitcoin are. Some of her quotes here are such head scratchers. I'm going to go ahead and read them. I have become increasingly concerned about the dangers cryptocurrencies pose to investors, consumers, and the environment in the absence of sufficient regulation in the United States. However, as the demand for cryptocurrencies continues to grow and these assets become more embedded in our financial system, the council must determine whether these trends raise concerns beyond investor and consumer protection and extend to broader systemic vulnerabilities that could threaten financial stability. She went on to say, the longer that the United States waits to adapt the proper regulatory regime for these assets, the more likely they will become so intertwined in our financial system that there could be potentially serious consequences if this market comes under stress. So Elizabeth Warren started initially by saying that this is a danger to the consumers. We should protect the consumers. First of all, you're supposed to be for the little guy and Bitcoin is for the little guy. So the entire premise of her argument is absolutely absurd. But now she's saying that Bitcoin and crypto are a threat to the entire financial system. Think about that. Could you imagine a year ago having some of the biggest politicians in the world, United States senators, talking about crypto and Bitcoin at this level, that it's a systemic risk to the entire financial system? This woman has seemingly lost her gosh darn mind, but it is really something to see them talking about Bitcoin at the highest levels of government. It is very clear that they've gone from being slightly dismissive to a bit scared to being absolutely terrified of Bitcoin, something that they can't understand and cannot control. It makes me think of one of my favorite songs of all time by Mob Deep. Scared to death, scared to look, they shook because they know such thing as halfway crooks. Scared to death, scared to look. Right. Now let's move on to the final story of the day, which is just a fun one. Burger King Brazil will accept Dogecoin for dog per dog food. They're selling dog purrs like Whoppers and they're accepting Doge. It'll cost roughly 60 cents to get your dog some cute Doge treats at Burger King in Brazil. Everybody's lost their damn minds and I love it. I will be live streaming today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Charterpalooza, taking requests for my paid newsletter subscribers. You can subscribe to that newsletter right down below in the description and make your requests for future weeks there. Also, check out everything else I have down in the description, including my amazing sponsor, Femex, who's giving up to a $1,200 deposit bonus for a deposit of one Bitcoin or more. Until later, everyone, I will see you soon. Peace. Peace.